You are welcome to our Savior's Church. This is a place where God is reigning, and we are glad to be part of it. Uh, today, Sunday school will be taken from the book of uh, the book of Acts, chapter one to the end. The book of Acts, chapter one to the end. I believe we are ready. I'm going to go straight to the point and then we leave room for comments and contribution as I like. Uh, this book of Acts is divided into four sections. The first, like, the first section of it is uh, from verse 1 to 5. Show the test of about the proof of Christ's restoration. Proof of Christ's restoration. I read. He said the former tripty of my people, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, on until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost has given commandment unto the apostle whom he has chosen. To move to whom also he has shown himself alive after his passion by many inflammable proof. Being seen of them forty days, and speak of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. That's four. He said, and being assembled together with them, command them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said, Ye have heard of me. Verse 5. He said, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence. In this uh, verse, the Lord is reminded the disciples about the work ahead of them. He reminded them that they need to wait to receive the Holy Spirit. They need to be in one accord because they have told them ahead of time that a day like this is going to come. And since he has revealed himself to them on several occasions, in which we read in the previous chapters, and we see how he also revealed himself all the way 40 days, day by day to different people, so that they be able to have that confidence that our Lord is real, that our Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This message also confirmed to us as a Christian that we have a Lord that never fails. They have always been there for us. That we should wait and depend on the Holy Spirit. The second section of it, which is uh, Christ's ascension, that is, Christ being lifted up from their means, from verse 6 to 11. He said, When they therefore were coming together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, Without at this time restore against the kingdom of Israel, and he said unto them, It is not for you to know the time or the season which the Father has put in his own power. <laughs> but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witness unto me, both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he has spoken, when he has spoken those things, why they behold, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. Verse 10. And why they looking steadfast towards heaven? As he went up, behold, two men stood by them in a white apparel. 
which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him going into heaven. That tells us that our God is a God of covenant. He said, He will go and prepare a place for us, and He will come back to take us home. And this is one of the assurances of our salvation. For Christ to be assuring us that He is coming back to take us home. No matter what we do, when we have that faith in our mind, we know that we are sure of the end that justifies what the Lord demands from us. As a child of God, we don't need to be gazing, looking at the sky, thinking, okay, when is he going to come? At the soon appointed time, the Lord will come. Just be steadfast, unmovable, unshakable in everything you do. Just keep pressing forward, and you will see how the Lord will continue directing your path. And the third part of it is the apostle unite in prayer, which is from verse 12 to 14. All right. Then return they unto Jerusalem from the Mount called Holy, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day journey. And when they were come in, they went unto Upper Room, where about both Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Ephesus, and Simon, the zealot, Judas, the brother of James, those all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication, with the woman and with Mary, the mother of Jesus. And with his prayer. This section is reminding us part of the covenant that God told the disciples that they need to die waiting for his Holy Spirit to come. And if that is a fulfillment that they waited, it's not like they are hands, they, they scattered themselves together in one accord, keep praying that the Lord through the power of Holy Spirit. And the Lord do what He promised. No matter what we, the Lord said, He said, in this work of my word, we never go without fulfilling the purpose. When He said His word, He will fulfill it. And that's an assurance for us as a Christian today to learn how to trust in the Lord, to learn how to hold on to Him. And the last section of it, which is, uh, from 15 to 26, which is Matthias chosen in place of Judas, from 15 to 26. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciple and said, the number of names together were about 120, men and brethren. The scripture must need have been fulfilled which the Holy Ghost, by the mouth of David, speaking before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. Verse 17. For he was numbered with us, and had obtained part of the ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of the nation. And falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowel touched up. Verse 19. And it was known unto all the dwelling at Jerusalem, inasmuch as the field is called in their proper tongue, a cell that is. The field of blood. Verse 20. He said, For it is written, 
and the Book of Psalms. Let his habitation be his servants, and let no man dwell therein. And his bishop read, let another take it. Wherefore, of those men which have company with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among them, begin from baptism of John unto the same day that he was taken from us. Must be one, must one be ordained to be a witness because of the resurrection. And they are point two. Joseph called Basada, which surname was Justin and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thou God, which knoweth the heart of all men, show whether of those two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and the apostleship, from which Judas has transgressed for him, that he might go to his own place, and the latter part, he said, and they gave forth their love, and the love fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This message also shows us the proper way of anointing people. When you trust in the Lord for him to lead you, they did not just take the decision on themselves. The big out of the people that have been following them, even this dimension, he said, from the day of John the Baptist, that when they were with them, that tells me that it's not just only the twelve that was with Jesus. That means a lot of other people are with Jesus that have been studying under his feet. And now is the time of reward. And the Lord chose Matthias among them. This is a message for me. That no matter what we do, even if you think nobody sees you, believe that God is seeing you. You're not doing it for nobody. You don't you you bust your time, you sacrifice your time, you do everything, and you didn't see nobody say, thank you for your well done. Don't give up. A day like this is coming. That the Lord will reward you for what you have done. My parents never dream of this. For God has appointed that day for a day of reward. For his faithfulness. As a child of God, we have a job to do. And God will continue to guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. At this point, I'll leave it up for question and comment. Yes? Praise the Lord. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I want to speak on how we made the first uh, in that place with us, Judas, and the disciples. <laughs>
you run your race according to the plans of God for you. Sometimes you might not get what you need. That doesn't mean God forgets about it. The time is coming that you're going to shine. That somebody will open the book of remembrance and say, Come on, a faithful servant. Come on, enjoy the benefits of the Lord. And that's exactly what Matarak has. Also, like you said, Joseph doesn't mean that because they didn't take him, they're going to quit from following. No. He's still going to continue doing his job. As a child of God, don't give up when things are not working your way. Just keep pressing forward. The Bible makes us to understand. Say, look on to the end. The author has finished out your faith. There's a time for everything. He will open that channel of blessing for you at his own time. Praise the Lord. Any more comments? Yes, ma'am. find yourself in Peter's position. How are you going to be able to do yours? Are you just going to say, okay, let's cast lots without prayer? The first part is that they are together in one accord, praying and supplication. They commit every step they want to take to the Lord's hand. And now they also ask him, out of his truth, Show us who you really want. That means they surrender the two of them unto God. It's not left for God to decide who he wants. And that's why the Bible makes us understand that the leaders of any way, any nation, is being ordained by God, whether to punish or to bless. No matter what you do, God has and in him. That's why, as a child of God, if things does not work the way you want, don't give up. Don't lose hope. The time is come. May God help us. Amen. Any further comments or questions? If not, uh, uh, yes, ma'am.
bless you. I thank you for coming to Sunday school this beautiful Sunday. This is the last Sunday of the month of April. And it is a Sunday that is designed for fasting and prayer. Why? Because all of us is in my life my life. And if things may not happen in our lives, we do not make time for not just prayer, but for prayer that is underscore that way fast. So I thank you. Now the story for today, as our minister has led us, is in Acts chapter 1. Again, we saw the importance of prayer emphasized there um, as to how, you know, Jesus um, instructed the disciples to stay back in Jerusalem and then after that they stay back in prayer before the next things will begin to happen. Even as important as the step of replacing Judas, prayer was also an instrument that was used to seek the mind of God. So, wherever you are, if you have joined us, we want you to know that the Lord will inspire us today to pray that good things will begin to happen, that the blanket of sickness all over the cosmos shall be folded away in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Before we pray over the Sunday school, I want to point out one or two things in addition to what our professor this morning had, uh, Professor Sandoz, who made some comments. You know, it is very important for us, I saw here in verse 8, you know, um, thou shalt tarry, amen? He says, for thou shalt tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power. In other words, he said directly, he says, but you shall receive power after that which the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and then you shall be witnesses unto me, both starting from Jerusalem to Samaria to Judea and to the utmost part of of the world. I want to encourage everyone who felt called to ministry. Uh, there's always a time of waiting. Now, what does that waiting translate to? The waiting time is a time of learning. It's a time of expectation. When the Lord says, those that wait upon the Lord, that is, those who are hanging around the Lord receiving instructions, doing things that they are being told to do. So those of us, especially those of us that are called to uh, you know, serve, um, do, do not underestimate or do not waste a time of waiting. It's very important. Everyone, before you become an expert, you have to go through some learning. Amen? Some training. The waiting time is not always a very beautiful time because it's a time when you don't know much about what's going to happen. But the Spirit of the Lord will let you know that you are on a course. And as you watch your time, I pray that the power of God will begin to teach you. Amen. In the word of the name of Jesus. Amen. And especially those of us who are in the service of God, I want us to pay attention to that in verse 8. You know, doing the work of the Lord starts from our own life to our own home. That is our Jerusalem. The whole event was taking place in Jerusalem. So that is why it's going to happen. Amen. Amen. Start with yourself. I am at first Jerusalem. Then as a household head, then. I begin to deal with the other aspect of my Jerusalem, which is my wife, my children, and the same thing with the brothers and sisters. Take care of your immediate family, and then you begin to extend, you know, the work of the Lord out. Then it begins to go deeper and deeper into the field, which is the whole world. Amen. And. Uh, I love the comments about you know the issue of uh, God wanting to replace. I'm not going to speak much about the replacement part, but one of the things when I was doing my own study, one of the things that really got me was how could someone had an opportunity that Judas had and then just lost it? How many human mm -hmm. beings created had an opportunity to be with Jesus for three and a half years? And in the end, he will have to be replaced. You 
But the Bible says it is a privilege that you and I will be called the sons and the daughters of God. That is, those of us who know the Lord through Jesus Christ. And I want to use that section to just encourage you that since you have known Christ, you have been baptized into the body of Christ. I want you to hold on to that privilege. Keep it. It's not everyone that has an opportunity to be called, to be a child of God. Yes, yes, of course, it is open to ever. But some of us, by the grace of God, we 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 are able to come in because somehow it's a little easier for us. So if you are listening to me this morning, whatever you are, you are a part of the body of Christ. You are a believer. You have become a child of God through the atoning work of the Lord on the cross. It's a great privilege. Keep it up. Hold on to Jesus. Have your resolution like Paul wrote in the book of Romans and convinced that nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is the word. In Christ Jesus, not even coronavirus, amen. Nothing. Not your husband, not your wife. Not the love of money. You know, we were doing our own study last night. You know, I, I, I was we were just trying to, you know, we're making a comment in the family as to how sometimes when we don't hold on to Christ, by the time the devil will catch you, will catch you so cheap. You look at the money that they gave to this guy to, <laughs> to betray Jesus. He went. I mean, it would have been a different thing if he was if he was tossed with a, a billion dollar, you know, okay, you know, we'll give you a billion dollar go, you know. So go, go give him for us. They're wicked. They okay, okay, the temptation was too much. Who was the temptation was in the pieces of so you know why the devil got it so cheap? Was because consistently the devil got his number. You know, I've mentioned it several times to my teacher as to how they will be in class and this guy will take away from class and go out and be doing his own thing when people are in class with Jesus, the Son of God, who had a limited time, three and a half years, and you are wasting that time going through some other rubbish outside. Let's run the race beautifully. His growth is there for us. And I pray that as we do this, the Lord will be going to help us in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to pray this morning. If many can stand, Carrie, please let's be on our feet as we offer two prayers to end the Sunday school of today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to pray for the grace of devotion. Amen. You know, one of the big lessons we learned here was that some of us have said when Matthias and Justus, when they were following Jesus, all they knew was the twelve disciples. Nobody ever knew that those who that position would be available. Nobody ever knew. It reminds me of the time of Joshua when he was following Moses the same thing. But he, he never knew that that would be an opportunity. Or even in our present world today, when, when Austin, Joel, for whatever reason, maybe he wasn't doing well in college, when he decided to come to his father minister and stay in the recording room, that guy was there for 17 years. And he never in his lifetime took that God will ever that lead him to come and be grateful church. Never! 
As a matter of fact, I admire him silently that I see someone like me, like you know, all of my brothers are in college, the university there and now. Due to my own whatever, whatever, I'm in the recording room where nobody will see me. But he stood there. He was recording the father's programs. Diligently for 17 years. Let me somebody there hear me. He was in the recording room. We watch that program that we don't know where it's coming from. Somebody then at the right time. God who does things the way he pleases him. He has a brother who is a medical doctor who, I mean, that would have been a prestigious replacement day. day. I'd be bragging right. Hey, God called on the medical doctor and do whatever God called me. Everybody will see the out behind his name, oh, he's taking over from this. I mean, that sounds like good in the eyes of the marketing world. And pick him from the record. The guy almost froze when the father said he's going to be the one to push next one. He said he almost ran away. So, time for the Lord is what he calls. So, I want us to pray this morning. God, whatever it is you are giving me in, 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 in this ministry, in the church, in the place that now, Lord, help me to hold on to begin to pray this morning. Begin to pray for devotion. This spirit of devotion. Lord, come upon me this morning. The, the spirit that does of Matthias and Justice, Father God, I, I ask God that you will help me to be devoted in the name of Jesus. Help me, my Father. I want to be devoted unto you. You know my life. You know the plans you have for me, Father God. I will not bear off. I will not bear off, Father God. I will, I will, I will stand serving you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. I want us to pray the second and last prayer. Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost this morning. We know we cannot do God's work excellently if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost. That's why Jesus said, Weary, wait, tarry, until you are filled, until you are endured. Take this opportunity with Rabbi and say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Ghost. I've come this morning. I studied Acts chapter 1. We want them with the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Begin to open your mouth and begin to pray. And begin to pray. Say it out. Let the Lord hear you. Let him know that you are the salary. So Lord, fear me. Lord, I am filled with the Holy Ghost. I pray that. And my God, in the name of Jesus Christ, fear me. Fear me. Fear me, O Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to go to a higher level in your service. Lord, fear me. In the name of Jesus, I open myself unto you this morning. I open myself unto you. Now fill my heart with your spirit. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, we thank you this morning for giving us another opportunity to come to the food, to the food table, to dine in your world. I pray that every pronouncement that your inspiration has given today, as we have had those with our ears, may they connect with our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that your work will begin to do great and mighty works in our life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Specifically today, I pray that you will help us to take our devotion into a higher level in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray, my Lord and my God, that today you will fill us with your spirit. No better day than today to fill us, that we may take your word to a higher level. Today we are believing that trust you. That's it to this service. How are we doing this? From today, our service of you going to a higher dimension. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We have prayed. Amen. Let's give a clap of it to the Lord. I want you to go to somebody. Usually, before we go around and give handshake, but those are the, the, the side effects of social distancing. The Lord bless us to do that. Let's go on. And Jesus uh, is going to lead us in an open prayer as we want to get into service mode. The carolers will get on board. Amen. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty Jesus. Hallelujah.
just try not to encourage most of us, especially the ones online, the ones in the house. Let's drop our phones and just go cast the law to our friends and work with it. To our friends and well wishes. So if you go on the page, do we do many things? Just share what you are transmitting right now, what you are broadcasting, for your friends and family to be with us. So that all can enjoy the goodness and the hand of the Lord. Just go on that page, share it, like it, follow it. Let the people know that you are a serious church. Praise the Lord. We are here again. We are here again. Father, we are here again. Holy Ghost, come and take control. Oh, yes. We are here again. We are here again. Father, we are here again. Father, we are here again. Holy Ghost, come and take control. We are here again. We are here again. Father, we are here again. Holy Ghost, come and take control. Oh, yeah. We are here again. We are here again.
and I will read. Verse 10. When Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he went to his house, where he had windows in his supper chamber, open toward Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he had done previously. Then these men came by agreement and found Daniel making petition and plea before his God. Then they came here and said before the king concerning the injunction, O king, did you not sign the injunction that anyone who makes petition to any god or man within 30 days except to you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing stands fast according to the laws of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be revoked. Then they answered and said before the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, O king, or the injunction you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. Verse 14. Then the king, when he heard these words, was much distressed and set his mind to deliver Daniel. And he labored till the sun went down to rescue him. Then these men came by agreement to the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that it is a law of the Medes and Persians that no injunction or ordinance that the king establishes can be changed. Verse 16. Then the king commanded, and Daniel was brought and cast into the den of lions. The king declared to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve, continually deliver you. And a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, that nothing might be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. No diversion, <clears throat> no diversions were brought to him, and sleep fled from him. Then, at break of day, the king arose and went in haste to the den of lions. Verse twenty. As he came in to the den where Daniel was, he cried out in a tone of anguish. The king declared to Daniel, "O Daniel, servant of the living God." Has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. Verse 22. My God, send his angels to shut the lions' mouths, and they have not harmed me, because I was found blameless before him, and also before you, O king. I have done no harm. Verse 23, the last verse. Then the king was exceedingly glad and commanded that Daniel be taken up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no kind of harm was found on him, because he had trusted in his God. May the Lord bless you, Amen. Amen.
If you are a man with wife, thank God for your husband. If you are a wife, thank God for your children. If the Lord has blessed you with children, Lord, we thank you for all that are under you as a people say, God bless you, Lord. We honor you, Jesus. We need to thank the Lord for every member of our church, of our Savior's church. And those that are, that are joining us on Facebook and on YouTube, they are becoming a part of our family, and we know that the covenant of God is upon them. Thank God for keeping us. Father, we honor you, we bless you. We worship you, King Eternal. Thank you for being faithful. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father, receive our appreciation for being the shade and the umbrella over us and for keeping us moving on, for keeping us intact, for keeping us safe and secure, barricaded from viruses and sicknesses and the disasters and dangers that are prevalent in our world today. Again, our life belongs to you and we continue to play them unto you as a thanksgiver. This will declare this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in God's presence. And wherever you are at home watching us, joining with us, when the mood of prayer today is the last Sunday of the month of April, in it's said that we are here, whatever you are, is a joy and is a mark of our position to our God who has kept us. Things are happening in mass, but God is awesome. God is faithful. Last week we talked about just some of these things that are happening in you know, a prevalent world now, unkind world. Praise the Lord. We call this social distancing. We all agree that there is no way you want to mention five words or compound words that you will not mention social distancing because for as long as you mention coronavirus, and since we are in the era of finding the solution to the problem, social distancing happens to be one of those. But like every remedy, medication, anything, there's always side effects. Amen? Uh, so one side effect that is so huge with social distancing is that the enemy has targeted it to make sure that one powerful tool in the kingdom is broken. That is the unity in the faith circle. When, pe when God's people gather together, great things happen. So the devil has, is now using social distancing to ensure that people are separated. Even to the point where some of some people are saying that even if you are not done and wife, you have to be very careful about the way you stay with each other. I say, God have mercy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> The devil does not want the father to be close to the son to anoint him or to the daughter to anoint him. You know, they embrace the power that is in embracing one another. You know, the enemy wants to take advantage of that. But by the option of the Lord, by the option of the Spirit of the Lord, we know that God is in the business of finding a way out for those who belong to him. And we discover that one of the things that God has given us in this season is that we must be Connected. So we say staying connected with the Lord is key. Staying connected with the King of Kings, with the Lord of Lords, the one who started the whole thing, the one who knew yesterday, today, and forever. The one who says, I know my plans for you. When it comes to count zero, your life matters and your destiny. And there is one who actually has constructed that before eternal time passed. And his name is God, Jesus our Lord. So stay connected. I want to encourage you. In spite of what social distancing wants to do and how the devil wants to capitalize on it through fear and everything, there's one thing that the devil cannot stop you if you determine to do it, and that is staying connected with God. So we started by saying that the fundamental way of staying connected with God is by faith. You don't have to carry a plate of faith. It's a thing that we do not see, but it's an evidence of faith hoped for. It's 
and evidence that there is a relationship between God and me, that through the blood of Jesus Christ, I have been saved and redeemed, and through the power of that blood, I stay connected with my God, that is, I have set the Lord always before me, as the psalmist will say, my thoughts is on him, he never leaves my imagination and my thought. The Bible says, without me, it is impossible to do what? To please God. I encourage you in this season, let the thought of God occupy your heart and your mind. Especially now that so many things are flying all that there. If you have a phone, which every human being on the face of the earth now, almost every, every human being has, there is a bombardment. People are sending all kinds of stuff. And believe me, some of those things go actually, you will know that if you pray too much in them, it's getting crazier. So you must determine to set the Lord always before you. And I pray that as you do so, you will become pleasing to the Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. When your life becomes an offering that is pleasing to the Lord, the Bible says the Lord will receive it. And by that, He will begin to release blessings upon your life. We went on to Robert I said that fellowship is very important. You must find a way to fellowship as a church. Bless the Lord for wonderful, gifted, and you know, technocrats that we have in church. They are helping us to ensure that our services are released out to you wherever you are. Thank God for the gifted younger men that have brought us and went there with the gift of singing and music. We were able to put beautiful services together to reach you. So God is making every effort to ensure that you are not left out of fellowship. We we'll give you time, we we'll give you announcement. So you have to make an effort to join us on Facebook. You have to make an effort to actually make it even more inviting by connecting with your big TV at home so that you will enjoy it more. Our gurus, they are putting all these things together, they send instruction. Now, why am I saying this? I'm saying this because the devil does not want you to fellowship because he knows that fellowship will increase your strength. That fellowship will increase your immunity, your divine immunity. Now, this is one of the one of the ways of escaping coronavirus is what is called immunity. The scientists they are looking for medication that we call vaccine, and the purpose of vaccine is to fight back and to defeat whatever the power of the virus is. But we know that if you are immune, it kills. The virus. Through fellowship, you receive divine immunity. In John chapter 5, we are told that Jesus Christ is the vine. And those of us who know him, we are the branches. And when we are connected with Jesus, we know that we receive our strength from Jesus. That he says that when you are connected that way, then you will be fruitful, you will be strong. He says if, in verse 5, if you are separated, then you die. And that is the purpose of virus. The devil is, is magnifying the virus to kill people. And unfortunately, many have lost their lives. I pray in the name of Jesus that if you are listening to me this morning, you will not die in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Like that David, like David said, I will live to proclaim the goodness of the Lord and his work in the life of the living. Fellowshipping. Awesome. Wonderful. You must make consensual efforts to stay connected in fellowship. Do you think the devil will not have this power? Like I always say scientifically, you know, if you are like me, I will, I mean, of course, I can't substitute church for any other place, but if it comes to me that maybe, you know, uh, I don't have to come, I will, I will thank God for saving me for five minutes drive, right? To a church, five minutes to a church, and then back. And then I will focus on those times to just stay connected in fellowship. But you think the devil will not challenge that? Yes, he will. He will send unnecessary phone call when it is time for you to join Facebook Live. 
He will do, he will find one thing that somebody will come to knock on your door if you are not careful. Amen? But you have to be determined that, you know what? This is a type of fellowship. I need this for my strength. I need this for my spiritual immunization. And in this season, I just got to do it. And I pray that as you make up your mind, God will help you to hold up distractions. Amen. I can tell you, amen. amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Stay connected in fellowship. When it is time for service through phone, make sure you call in. We have one on Friday, night preaching. Bless me the Lord for everyone that joined us on night preaching. We send instructions there. I need instructions. Do what you need to do. Because the plan of God for you is that you survive this virus. And in the name of Jesus Christ, you sure will. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So also we talk about the word. You have to hear God. God speaks. He speaks instructions. If you cannot listen to the instructions of God, things are going to be fine. Because God wants to pilot us. He wants to lead us safely through this season. And that is why it is important to listen to his word. The Bible, I said last week, I said, even in spite of the fact that you are loved, you are making decisions. And I, I hope you are not making decisions without the wisdom of God. Because if you don't do that, then you are playing into the hands of the enemy, whose plan it is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But the plan of God for you and I is to lead us. He says, my word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. In other words, when the word and if the wisdom of God is guiding you, even in this season, you can make a decision that will be a blessing to you after the fact. And I pray, I pray in the name of Jesus that every one of us in this family of God and those that have joined with us on Facebook or wherever you are, I pray that this season shall become a big blessing for you and I Amen. and for your family Amen. in the name of Jesus. So today we're going to talk about connecting with God in prayers. Say that with you, say prayers. Prayers. Say connected in prayers. In prayers. Why is it important for you to say connected in prayers? No, but what you are vulnerable. Let me say that one more time. You are what? You are vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Many of us have people around us that are so meticulous. If you have some of this... Uh, health gurus in your house, the people who work in health, you don't know you are here for, for, for a big day. They have everything they have to cross about everything. But you know what? I mean, as much as I, I will do everything I can, we have some that I, you know, I, bring, it, I bring it to church, you know, wipe your hand, you know, we wipe everywhere that people touch in church, and they say, oh, we'll do everything possible. But you know what? In reality, you will discover that there is no way you can be 100% Vigilant, you cannot be 100% like you know perfect when it comes to all these things. So, every human being, so long can you flesh, you are vulnerable, and that is why you cannot do without staying connected in prayers. The Bible says in first Peter 5 8, he says, Be sober, be vigilant, your, your adversary. Satan and his cohorts, they pray around, seeking him to do what? To devour. You get to stay connected in prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is making up, deciding a time and a place where you're going to say, Daddy, I want to talk to you. And I will need to also hear from you. Prayer I will say people talk about prayers, but the problem is, do people do it? That's why the problem comes. Every one of us says we can write this about prayer. Prayer, prayer, hey, turn it up. But the fact is, the reality is now. Let's come down to the to, to the need of you. you pray as you ought to. The word of God says, Galatians 5 says, so pray without ceasing. That is, let your life and your mindset be on prayer constantly. Whether you are driving, pray. If you are eating, pray. If you are walking around, pray. That is, 
Just make sure your, your, your antenna is tuned to God's presence so that there will be conversations. Why? You need to know your hour. I need it every second. I mentioned last week now, if you are somebody who follows those that are leading us in the nation, which, by the way, that's another reason why you need prayer. You need to pray for those who are in position, those who are issuing the guidance and the Lord who are leading us as a nation. You need to pray for them. This is not a time for politics. I tell people, clear your mind. When somebody is in authority, he's in authority. In my household, by the grace of God, you know, joined together with my wife and children, we are in authority. There is no much anybody can legislate from the outside to do for things we do inside. The president is there of every nation to lead them. Clear your mind. Listen to him directly. Don't let in between people who are full of hatred come to Baba whatever somebody is saying. Connect with it, with the source. If there are instructions to be followed, follow that instructor, but we must pray for the presidents, the mayor, the governors, people who decide what we do. It don't matter what, what party they belong to. Because whatever they say can make or break us. The Bible says in the book of the Lord, it says, pray for the kings, pray for the leaders. In this season, when a, war, a wrong war from a leader can ruin destiny. You dare not pray for him. We must. You see, I was going to say that the people who are leading us, Dr. Deborah Brooks and Dr. Tony Fauci, that is the brain, the medical brain behind what the president is doing, one of the phrases, one of the most said phrases in their mouth is, we don't know. Follow those, follow those, you know, I know some of you will even have if you are home, but you know, you have time uh, to follow them and listen to them live. You ask them this question, we don't know. And it is true, they don't know, because they don't know what's going to happen the next moment. When this is started, you know, they work on models to forecast what we should do. They use a certain model that told us that thousands Close to a million people would die after they said 800,000 to over 2 million, right? 2.4. They use a model. Can you just imagine? In their day, they turned out to be like I said, the model was wrong. But you know what happened when they did that model? So that the, the, the economic part, the money that would have been saved to do some other things, they, they, they poured it into providing things in anticipation that over 2 million people would die. You're going to say, Pastor, you are wrong. The neighbor ship that was brought to New York is now useless. And you know how much was spent to bring that ship to New York? But the fact I'm saying here is in this season when we don't know what will happen next, you know who to talk to? Who? God! God himself. He's the one who has been our dwelling place from generations. Psalm 90 verse 1. He's the one who is omniscient. He knows all things. Nothing goes on that he does not. No. We need prayers. Fear is a monster. When there is uncertainty, then fear comes. You need prayer to minimize the power of fear in our lives. The Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear, 2 Timothy 1 7, but of power of love and of the world of a sound mind. A sound mind tell you around this time that you must take time to call upon the one who knows all things, the one who is omnipotent, the one who has the powers to do all good things. The Jehovah Rabbi, the one who is able to heal, even if somebody falls sick. And let me say this again. You must apply sound mind. 
aim to stay connected in prayer. You must be intentional. You must find a way to make it happen. Don't the best among us here, God has given us the quarterly hours of prayer. If I were to receive testimonies from people, you will see how many things can happen in those hours. Ranging from number one, forgetfulness. Number two, distractions. Number three, some of us may be, a, those of, that are working, they may be at work. So, you will discover that in, in any particular arena in the family, you have to have someone who will do what? Who will be like a, a senior prefect? Who must be able to do what? To remind people that, you know what? Hey, guy, it is time for prayers. And if that is the way it is time for them, the devil may make somebody to maybe get drunk and then forget to take his medication and that's an easy one. You will not get drunk as a child of God. Yeah. I can't hear you, man. Yeah. You will not get drunk and forget the things you need to do. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. But, it's, but that would be better for it. You know, people can get drunk with so many other things. People say, you are watching so far, oh, that movie is so good. Now you are watching about three hours movie and then the hours of prayers are passing by. You can't remember to pray. That will not be your portion. It will come against destruction. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will do what you are supposed to do to stay stronger. In the name of Jesus, you must freshly speak to God. That is how to stay connected. Jeremiah 33, 3, the word of God says, Come upon me and I will do what? Come on, say it. God wants us to call on Him. He wants us to depend on Him. As I chapter 4 in verse 20 to 31, He says, Those that want to pray shall what? Shall renew their strength. Those who wait upon the Lord, who hang around God in the place of prayer, their immunity will do what? Will become increased. Because they wait upon the Lord, they call upon the Lord, they stay in the presence of the Lord. When you hang around God so much in prayer, you will hear Him. Either in audible voice or in the silent whispering of His Spirit. And when you hear from God, it emboldens you. It encourages you. Because every word of God is true. I want to remind you this morning that the scripture, the word of God, has given us so many examples of the reality of the effectiveness of prayers. And if you are listening to me this morning, I want you to hear this part. Prayer works. When nothing else works, prayer will do what? We work. Now, comparatively, the story that was read from this morning in Daniel chapter 6. Now, I want you to look at the degree of certainty that the devil got people's number. Or oh, you, you are facing a situation like what we have right now, the statistician they will break it down. You know, we can calculate the probability of anyone getting infected based upon the statistics of how many people are, have been tested and you know, the number of people infected. When you put all those things together, Statistics can give you a probability. Now, but you know, those of us who belong to God, we don't work on that probability is 100% because we are God's children. Psalm 91, those who dwell in the secret places of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. We are 100% immune and secure, but just for the purposes of illustrating the power of prayers. Look at the story that happened that was written in Daniel chapter 6. This one is 100% disaster. The enemies gathered together to kill this man because they know that he is a man who not only prays, but he must pray to the living God who has all powers on earth and in heaven. They went to the king 
and, 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 and bamboozed the elder of the camp. They know what? You are the powerful man here. Nobody should be praying to another person but you. King Darius. And they made him sign a paper that whoever prays to anyone except Darius, that the person will be thrown into the den of lives. Now, so many principles are in play here. But cut a long story short, Daniel, knowing the power of prayer, not just in time of crisis like this, because the Bible says when he started to pray, he said he started to pray as he used to what? To pray. As he used to pray. The reality now is that you know, a lot of people who have been very lazy in prayer before now suddenly they want them to be praying because it's a problem. Because you are not used to praying. But saints, brothers, and sister, with what is going on, if you have been lazy in prayer, this is not the time to be lazy in prayer. So the guy went into prayer and he went to report him that he was praying. And the king was so disturbed because the king knew this man that this is a valuable man. Listen to me. If you are a prideful person, you are a valuable person. I can't hear you. I can't hear your name. If you are somebody who loves to stay in God's presence, you are very valuable. Somebody like you, you should be in a family. Every family must have a prayerful guy, boy, girl in their family because you are the cornerstone of your family. You can let you can let God in if you want to pray. The king was so disturbed because he knew that Daniel is not somebody that must be killed in this nation. He was he, he was an MVP, but. His hands were tied because of the edict. And look at the irony. When eventually, when the man was thrown to the den of lion, what did the king do? He eh? didn't sleep. Then what did he do? He fasted and prayed. <laughs> Intentionally, the king, he wasn't supposed to be a child of God in that sense. But suddenly, because of the fact that, they, that Daniel must be saved, the king himself that signed the edict now went into fasting and I'm talking of I'm talking of a direct confrontation of death. It's like, it's like someone is able to get somebody get a diagnosis of cancer at stage four. You know, when you say that in the, in the medical in the medical world, people just turn back and begin to cry. But see what God did through prayer for this man here. The power of prayer in that king. God went into the den of the lion. He shot the teeth of the lion. And the other time when I, when I, the other time when I spoke about this, there, there are some of that, you know, every man may have their own phobia. We are not even talking about the lion actually killing people, the mere fact that you are going to be thrown into the den of lion. That's enough to do what? To, to give people cardiac arrest. Right there, there, before you even take me like, I'm, I'm dead. Some people that don't let me hear the diagnosis before they say, mm -hmm, just. But imagine, he was actually thrown there and the blood showed up. See it? When you read this story, it makes you to understand that in this season, you must stay connected in prayer because prayer. We actually make a difference. Prayer can make a difference. Prayer can keep you away from being <laughs> from, from, from being contaminated. It can keep you away from being infected. Prayer works. Prayer works. It has worked in more graphic situations. In James chapter 5. Verse 17. The Lord reminded us that we have a man who was called Elijah. He said he's a man like you and I. He said it's not, it's not an angel. Just like you and I. And encouraging us about the fact that prayer work. He said, This man shot away out for three years. Only because he did what? He prayed. But before I close this morning, there's something I want to draw from there. 
Do you know when you go back to First Kings chapter 17 and read in, in Elijah from the story of this Elijah pastor shutting down the rain, you know it was a big power between the good and the evil, between God and the devil through King Ahab. So powerful people were in operation, but look at the regular people who were in Samaria and in Israel. Suddenly, rain just stopped for three years. Do you imagine what regular people were going through? These were people they don't have no understanding of where this problem was coming from. They didn't know that the big boys quote unquote, that the big boys were fighting. Listen to me as I close this morning before we pray. Right now we are seeing all these things. Many of us don't know the basis for all that is happening. We are just many people we are just we are just in the midst of the whole thing. But the Bible says they do so no 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 they are gone. They shall be what? They shall be strong in the middle of this pandemic. Because we are connected with God. Who knew where the source is coming from? Many of us who read extensively, there are so many theories out there about how why this is happening. As a preacher, I'm not going to stand on this book to begin to speculate, but I do read this for myself, and I educate myself, and I know what I should believe and what I should believe, but I don't know one thing. That something this big does not just happen. There are powers behind it. But thank God, because I'm connected to the one who has all the powers, Thank God, because as a member of our Savior's church, you are connected with the one who has all the powers, the one who has all the knowledge, the one who has all the capability, and that's one who says, come upon me. Let's go on our feet this morning. Oh, yeah. We're going to pray. Bring out your Bible. We're going to do some professions in prayer this morning. Bring out your Bible. Whatever you are, you are joining us, bring out your Bible. I want to open the book of Psalms. We're going to recite. Personally, if you, if you have King James Version, you can recite, but if not, that is well with me. Just whatever version you have. We're going to start from Psalm 123. And I want you to lift up your voice. When I say start, you are going to start. I'm going to begin to read it. And as you read it, the power and the grace of God will begin to pour upon you and your family. Psalm 123. Begin to recite. Lift up your voice and say, Unto thee, lift up my eyes on the world in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of the sun come to the ends of the master, and as the eyes of our maid come to the ends of our mistress, so our eyes look upon the Lord our God unto the end of the earth. Have mercy upon us, O God. Have mercy upon us, for we are truly filled with content. Our soul is actually filled with the scorning of those of our kings and with the contempt of the proud. May the Lord empower his word in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to move on to Psalm 124. We're going to raise up your voice and speak this in prayer. Let's go. Let's go. If you cannot be the Lord on our side, now we need to say. If you cannot be the Lord who was on our side, when we go up against us, then they have swallowed up our food. When they are wrong, they are still on the case of us. Then the waters have overwhelmed us. The sin has gone over our soul. Then the blood waters have gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as a prey to their tree. Our soul is the same as a bird out of the sea of the palace. And the snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Let the Bible say, Amen. One more time. Amen. One more time. Amen. Go with me to Psalm 125, and I want to open your book up on, and rest up, and let the devil begin to shiver, and let the other man begin to, to, to take to take off, and begin to just go into the bottom of the street. Let's go, Psalm 125. They that trust in the Lord shall be as no Zion, which cannot be removed, but abide forever. As the month is around about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from his God, even forever. For the word of the woman shall not rest upon the Lord of the righteous. Bless the righteous people for their hands into a new beauty. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good, and to them that are open in their hearts. As for such as turn aside unto an evil, 
the Lord shall lay them with the workers of the new prison. But peace shall be upon Israel. Say that, like it, and peace shall be upon me. Say that, and peace shall be upon me. Say, shall be upon my family, and peace shall be upon my family. In the name of Jesus, I say, peace shall be upon our Savior's church, and peace shall be upon our Savior's church. In Jesus' name, we pray this morning. Amen. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Come to Galatians chapter six. Glory to God, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Galatians chapter 6. There is one single verse. Okay, let, no. let's start from verse 16. We're going to read verse 16. Verse 16 to 18, Galatians 6. You're going to pronounce that. And the power of the Holy Ghost will be releasing grace upon your life. Amen. Let's go from verse 16. As many as walk according to this road, peace be upon them, and mercy upon the Israel of God. From henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Let's go to second time, 16 to 18. For as many as walk upon to this road, peace be upon them, and mercy and upon the Son of God. From henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the mass of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be upon your spirit. And say it like this whole time. Speak it over yourself, your family, and your let's go. And as many as we well are calling into this road, peace be upon us, us. and mercy, and, and upon the house of God. From henceforth, let no man trouble us, for we bear in our bodies the mark of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be upon our spirit. Amen, 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 amen. The mark of Christ upon us. Amen. Coronavirus cannot touch us. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Darkness cannot withstand light. We are safe and secure. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In a minute, I want you to raise up your voice and declare war against every agent of destruction that is trying to minimize the weapon of war of prayer in your life. Around this season, maybe you are somebody who is talking, don't disturb around the gospel and the prayers. Maybe you are not able, you don't remember anymore. You don't even do it. You know, you keep to say, not every power of distraction in my life or in the life of somebody that is not allowing them to, to, to speak the name of God. Don't begin to, begin to pray with them right now. When we come against every spirit of distraction that will not let me call Jesus. That will not allow me to say, Jesus, have mercy. I declare that Lord will begin to go down every power of destruction in the name of Jesus Christ. Every destruction that will not allow me to speak Jesus in this season. The name of your God is a strong tower. I declare, Lord, that you will go down every of such destruction in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus. Then we have prayer. Amen. Open your Bible to Romans 8 37. The Bible says, Nay, in all these things, so we give a Nay, in all these things, all these things that are flying around, all these fears, all are cancelled. Nay, in all these things, I am not the conqueror. Through him that loved me. Nay, no, this is. I am more than conqueror through Christ that loved me. Remember, through his love, you are saved. Through the power of his blood, you are saved. I want to declare 
the beginning of the time, the next time, and so on. I'm not that come from. I'm not that come from. I'm, the, I'm victorious. Oh, that's all fact. The face is over. I'm not that come from. I will make it through. In the name of Jesus Christ, my children are more than come from. In the name of Jesus Christ, my wife is more than come from. My children are more than come from. Every member of the senior church are more than come from. Every member of the senior church are more than come from. In the name of Jesus Christ. No you can touch you. You are victorious in the name of Jesus. You are more than comfort. You are victorious in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In, the name of Jesus. in, the name of Jesus. in Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather together at the throne of grace. Your most says, knowing that we have confidence in this, our God, our Father, say, let us therefore with boldness come towards the throne of grace to obtain mercy. Lord, this morning, everyone who is in church this morning, and those that are joining us, receive your Lord of mercy. Amen. Receive your Lord of mercy. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive your guidance in the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive progress in the name of Jesus. Amen. For as the Lord lives, no evil shall touch you. Amen. The mark of Christ sets you apart. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You are connected with Jesus. Amen. The power of holy Lord Jesus will never descend from your mouth. Amen. The Bible says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous one into it, you are saved. Amen. Even as you call Jesus, begin to be saved. Amen. Begin to receive power. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. But we speak to anybody remotely connected to us who may be sick of any kind of sickness. The Bible says that one of them are trying to say, He sent His word by His word He led them. I come against any sickness. Coronavirus is not, no, 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 that one is not even additional. What? If there be anything, 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 I declare that the blood of Jesus will begin to evaporate it. Live your life in peace. In good health, in the name of Jesus. Amen. As you go out this way, no trouble will come your way. Amen. Because of you, Amen. people that you come across shall be sanctified. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. the blood of the Lord will come on you. Amen. The power of resurrection will keep you afloat. In the name of Jesus, Amen. in the name of Jesus, Amen. in the name of Jesus, give us a cup of his hands. And that is glorious. You don't have any confidence. If God be for me, who can be against me? To God be glory this morning. Says it's a blessing to have this opportunity on this last night. Pray as we're going to be running the service close now. Let's take our offering before we leave God's presence. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Another way to get connected is through giving. Giving up to God what belongs to God. That's one of the ways. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to give our offering this morning. We're going to give our home whenever you are in church. Again, we send across to you the modalities, cash out, sell, stopping by church when you want to drop your offerings, uh, going to account to pay it in. So many ways that God has provided for you to stay connected in giving. Why? Because after this, God is going to open a big chapter economy for his people. And I pray that all the money that is going around around town right now, God will give you your own. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you know, some of them are kind of complex to feel it, but God will give you favor. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray on every offering this morning as we give, Father God. We pray that the power to receive wealth. We begin to come our way in the name of Jesus. Amen. This season, as Dublin as it is, will not disturb all your program for us financially. Amen. I pray for every promotion in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray for open doors. Amen. I pray for better employment in the name of Jesus. And as I pray that all the, the, the money that is floating around at the, uh, on the stimulus, holy Kibababa, every stimulus that is in town. Let them begin to find you. Become blessed. May the Lord receive your offering this morning. In the name of Jesus.
fellowship, in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God is doing a new thing in my life. It is springing forth, and it shall be known. The Lord will make a way for me in the wilderness. I will provide me with water in the desert. The Lord fought me for himself, and I will show forth his praise continually. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed week, saints.